Hi, welcome to Main Street Macro. I'm Neela Richardson. And they did it. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point. That is the highest increase since 1994. And the Fed has complained about a lot of their policy uh, decisions over the last couple of years. And the, the biggest one that they've admitted is that maybe they waited a little too long to act on inflation, expecting the inflation that we're seeing now to be transitory and not stick around. And the Fed had a good reason for this belief because historically, that's exactly what happened. Supply shocks just didn't stick around very much and really didn't persist in terms of price increases. There were too many other forces that brought inflation down whenever there was a shock to supply. Those forces included an aging demographic population, globalization, low productivity, and automation. Well, now the Fed is not only grappling with this current spell of inflation, but the idea that inflation is behaving a lot differently than it has in the past. And so today's Main Street Macro blog, we're going to ask the question, have we entered a new world of inflation? Well, here are three signs that we may have. The first is consumer expectations. You see, this is where uh, psychology and economics collide. If people expect more inflation in the future, they actually start to change their behavior in the present. And that in itself is inflationary. It's the ultimate self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's exactly what we're seeing on the consumer side right now. Not only is consumer sentiment low at record levels, according to recent surveys, the main reason that people are so down in the dumps is inflation. The second thing that we see in, in surveys now is that people are expecting higher price levels, at least for now, though they do think, and this is good news, that inflation peters out over time. Right now, consumer expectations for inflation is the highest they've been on record. This is very different than in the past and a sign that inflation is different. The second sign we're looking at is borrowing costs. This is also coined financial conditions by uh, certain market commentators. But what it comes down to is that costs are rising both for companies and businesses. For evidence of this, just look at two markets. Look at car loans, which are up above 5%, and home mortgages, which are up over 6% on the 30-year mortgage. That's a big increase than we've seen in the past. And incidentally, these are two markets where supply shortages have been most acute. If borrowing increases on Main Street, it may limit uh, what consumers can afford. Now, there is a silver lining here because it also means that saving rates have gone up uh, higher than in the past. The third sign that inflation is changing is the jobs market. You see, for a long time, the Fed was in this great comfort zone. They could push the unemployment rate down to where it is now, 3.6%, historically low levels, without fearing that it would trigger another bout of inflation. Well, they may not have that comfort zone anymore. Um, inflation, the unemployment rate might actually have to go up in order to make sure that inflation doesn't spiral out of control. And in fact, if you look at Federal Reserve projections of the unemployment rate, it goes up from the 3.6% it is now to over 4%. So the question that remains after last week's press conference for Main Street, for businesses, and for the Federal Reserve is have we entered a new world of inflation where higher prices stick around a lot longer on Main Street? Thanks for watching the Main Street Macro. For more information on the week ahead, please go to adpri.org.